Hi. Today I will show you how you can make this extremely useful dual channel lab bench power supply which has a USB port as well to power things like Arduino, ESP32 developer board etc. One channel is useful for precise low power applications while other is useful for high power application. Together they can output about 120 watts of power. It also has the most important feature of a commercial power supply which is the current limiting function. Now your circuit will not blow up if there is some problem with it. So without any further ado, let's build it. The first channel is built around this bug boost converter that has its own display which shows the output voltage and current that load is currently consuming. It can provide an output current of 4 ampere continuously with no problem. It also provides a current limiting feature which to be honest not a lot of converters do. It has a rotary encoder for selecting the output voltage and current instead of a potentiometer which is a big plus for me. Good build quality makes it the perfect choice for a power supply. The second channel comprises of this bug boost converter. It is a hefty one as you can see. It is rated for 80 watts and can easily handle up to 10 amps of current in normal conditions. Just look at this beauty. I can look at it for hours. It also provides a CC mode but I cannot get it to limit the output current yet. I am not sure it does. The output voltage and constant current value is controlled by potentiometers and CCCV mode is depicted by a common cathode LED incorporated in the board itself. As the module does not have a display, we will use this digital voltmeter ammeter that can measure up to 10 amps of current. Finally, as I'll take this input, I got this chonky power supply. It has a great build quality and feels nice too. A word of advice, try to get the power supply which is cooled by a fan. If you get the one which has lot of holes on it, it will be very hard to make multiple holes on the enclosure for its proper cooling. Test the power supply and adjust its output voltage to around 12.1 to 12.2 volts. I will use one square mm wire throughout the build as it is flexible enough and can easily handle 10 amps of current. Now take a piece of the wire and carefully connect the output of the power supply to V in of the first bug boost converter. Check if the output voltage displayed is correct or not using a multimeter. Now to show you the current limiting feature, I will use this 5 watt 1 ohm resistor. Currently the limit is set to 1.5 amps and as you can see the CCLED turns on that means the output current has reached 1.5 amps and now the current won't increase but the output voltage will drop. I set it to even lower output current and the output voltage drops even further. So our module is working perfectly. Now leave the first module there and connect the second one to the power supply as this will be our working configuration. Connect the voltmeter ammeter to the bug boost module. The connection depends on the voltage we want to measure. If it is below 30 volts, we can use the same source to power the meter. If it is above that, we need to bring it down to less than 30 volts. Connect it according to your needs. I will not go beyond 30 volts, that's why I am using the same source to power the meter as well. We will be using same setup to test this module. As you can see, it is drawing around 2.9 amps. The module is going into CC mode, but it is not limiting the current. So now that you have tested the setup, let's move ahead. To make the enclosure, I will be using these plastic boxes because working with metal is exponentially harder and I don't even have the tools for it. While you are at it, get a power cord and connector for it as well. One box will be used to house the power supply and another will be used for everything else. I will show you how in a moment. The quality of these plastic boxes is really good. It has thick walls and is very sturdy. I recommend getting boxes like this for the enclosures. The power supply doesn't fit readily in the box. The support structures are in the way. But we can easily remove it and file it to make it flat. The support structures for lid are also interrupting so we can apply the same process to it. Still the lid is not closing flush. I removed two of these extra plastic structures around the screw hole and now the lid is closing perfectly. The connector won't fit here so we will have to make a hole for it on the top. After applying masking tape, I drew the outline for the connector and on the back I did the same for the power supply fan. Actually the connector will go like this, not the other way around. I drilled the corners first and then using a fine curve cutting blade, I completed the cut. I was planning to cut a circle for the fan but I saved myself a lot of time and hassle by cutting a square instead. It will not be visible anyways. Now we can remove the masking tape from the box. Wiring will be a bit tricky as we will have to lay it down the opposite way because of the fan. For the AC input, I will route wires from the left of the power supply to the power socket. 
I will use a 3 core wire and strip it completely after measuring the length required. To reduce the complexity, we can connect earth wire to the body of the power supply as the body is connected to the earth terminal which is a common practice for safety in any electronic device. If you don't have a cable shoe, you can intertwine the wires and make it U-shaped for added grip with the terminals. I used a fitting screw and washer to connect the earth wire to an already present hole in the power supply metal body. For the DC output, this hole can only accommodate one wire. So for the other one, I will use this hole and route it out near the output terminals. It is safe unless the wire is insulated and not coming in the way of anything inside the power supply. Then I place the power supply in its designated position and started routing the wires making sure it will not come in the way of the top lid of the box. Now it's time to solder the wires to the power connector. I will use heat shrink tubes to ensure isolation. Route the wires through the connector hole and solder it accordingly. Take special care to connect the air terminal to its proper pin on the connector. Use continuity function to be double sure. Secure the power connector, take care of the wires and turn it on. Check the output voltage. If it is 12 volts, we are good to go. On the second box, make a hole at the center of the bottom like this. This will be used to route the output wires to the bug boost modules. Corresponding to that hole, make a hole on the top lid of the first box. For attaching the second box on top of the first, we will need to make another hole as it is not already present there. Corresponding to those two holes, make holes on the lid like we did earlier. Now we can permanently fix the connector using some super glue on the outside and hot glue on the inside. Bring the DC output wires out of the hole we made and we can close the lid using the screws provided making the preparation of the first box complete. Attach the second box on top of the first so that we can start working on it. Get some banana sockets which will be used as the output terminals for this bench power supply. Now we must make holes for all these things on the lid of the box. Additionally, a USB port can be used but is completely up to you. This bug boost module uses a 1K and 100K ports for CC and CV setting respectively. We will replace it with a port that has a knob. Also, the CC CV LED needs to be brought out too. Blue knob for voltage and red for current is to be used. I replaced the ports on the module and while I was testing it, something devastating happened. The output voltage suddenly jumped to 55 volts, I heard a crackling noise and now there is no output from the module. I somehow burned something as the input terminals seem to be shorted. I didn't debug it for long, if you have any idea of what might have happened let me know in the comments. Goodbye my friend, you will be remembered. So anyways, I promised you a dual channel power supply and a dual channel power supply you shall get. I have this bug boost module which is not as powerful and does not have a CC mode but it will do. I will change this when I get a replacement. I changed the port on it and did a quick test. I will not go beyond 15 volts this time as it is not my use case and I don't want to take any risk with the only bug boost module I have. I will use the old module as reference for making the cutouts because memories. Just kidding, because I am adamant to replace it once I get the replacement. I will update you guys when I do it. I made the cutouts for everything, it turned out really great and I am very proud of it. These extra grooves are for accommodating the grips provided on the modules. This video is getting long, let's speed it up now. I put everything in place and made all the connections. The connections are straightforward. You can check description for the pictures. I had to solder wires to the banana socket. If you find that the voltage displayed is not correct, there will be a port on the back of the module to calibrate it. Use that to make it display the correct values. Both the display modules can be calibrated easily, just check their documentation. For the USB socket, I will be using this bug converter as I only want 5V through it. I will connect it to the banana socket and not the output of the power supply so as to be able to measure the current drawn by the device connected to the USB socket. The voltage at banana socket doesn't matter as the bug converter always keeps the voltage stable at 5V unless the input falls below 6V. So make sure you don't use the USB port if banana socket is at voltage less than 6V. Few drops of hot glue secures both the converters at their spot and same goes for the USB socket. I arranged the wires and we can close it all up now. Before using the USB port though, check that its wiring is correct using a breakout board. I shortened the shaft length and put the knob on it and our build is complete. If you don't have connecting wires or you want to make one, get some banana plugs like this. On the other end of the wire, I will be using alligator clips. Get a wire, strip a good amount of it, bend it in half and insert it in the banana plug after loosening its screw. Now you can tighten up the screw strongly and it's done.
For the alligator clips, first remove the insulation of the clips, then strip around 3 to 4 cm of the wire you are going to use. Bend it 180 degrees so that it is completely lying on the plastic insulation of the wire, then using a nose plier bend the pointy metal thingy on the alligator clips so that it completely wraps around the wires and make a good grip on it. Put the insulation back and you are done. Alternatively, you can slide the insulation of the clips first on the wire, then connect the clips to wire like shown earlier. To put the insulation back, get something that the alligator clips can bite on for reducing gap on the back of the clips and you can slide the insulation on the clips again. That was all for this video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, please drop it in the comment section. Please like, share and subscribe as it can help our channel grow. Till next time.